so uh, we have occupied this stage for far too long, and now we need to turn you over to somebody who, who is just a, a gift to this city. Um, I, I did ask Matt to, for the privilege of taking the stage to introduce our speaker today because she means a great deal to me. Uh, we got to know her through the Hug Grant program. I'm really proud, too, to say that we have another Hug recipient, Coach William, William McNeely over there, and as on the way out, he has his Do Greater Creative Lab, mobile lab that you can take a tour in. But we get a lot of applications, blessedly, through uh, the Hug Grant, and about, I think, 18 months ago, we got one that just had to be funded immediately. And we asked very few questions, but the answers demanded respect and action. Um, a young lady, a uh, woman reached out and said she wanted a hug for her organization, Pink Mentor Network, saying this organization was founded on two thoughts. I've never met a woman I couldn't learn from, and every woman deserves a stage, a microphone, and an audience. She went on to say that our mission is to give anyone access to female mentorship. We get women to take the stage and share their achievements, failures, and experiences so all may learn. By leveraging the collective wisdom, Charlotte's most generous wisdom, we are building and guiding the next generation to lead this great city. When you get an email like that, you freaking do something. <laughs> and thanks to our sponsors and to you, we were able to give her $250, which was not a lot. But she graciously took it. We made an investment. We made an investment in, in Stacy, just Stacy Cassio, just like we have our other Hug Grant recipients. But what an amazing thing has happened. We gave her $250. In the last year, she has given us incredible friendship. We wanted to support her, and over time, she has supported us. She has become my mentor. She was there for me a few weeks ago when I needed somebody to say, hey, keep moving in this direction, or maybe stop moving in that direction. <laughs> she has an uncanny gift for building people up. And in a city that's obsessed with development, and hey, that's great, I love development, I worked for one at one point. We need buildings, we need roads, we need infrastructure, but we need to invest in our greatest resource, which is our people, and their talent, <laughs> and their self-worth. So on her business card, it says founder of, I guess it says founder of, CEO. founder and CEO, thank you. You've, I, I really, I needed you here this morning. Founder of Pink Mentor Network, but I'm gonna say that you are a builder, you are a developer of human capital, of the most important structures and resources and untapped potential in our city. I'd like everybody to welcome Stacy Cassio, founder and CEO of Pink Mentor Network, and my friend. Every woman deserves a stage and an audience. Bam. <laughs> Mic drop, yeah. Hi, it is so great to be here. Uh, I should let you know that I am a massive introvert and terrified of public speaking. <laughs> the other thing is, I was actually sitting right there when I found out I'd be taking this stage. We were at late night at the Comedy Zone and my husband and I were looking at my phone and I was like, I'm taking this stage. I'm gonna be the most unfunny person to ever take this stage. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, congratulations. You woke up early to learn from a unfunny introvert. So thank you all for being here. The joke is officially on you all, so thank you. Uh, like Tim was saying, I am the founder and CEO of the Pink Mentor Network. Now this whole mission started out of my own need to find a mentor. It was three years ago, and I was the engineering manager of a manufacturing company. I was literally in charge of a team that was welding bumpers. My team was male. The organization's leadership was male. My customers were all male. I needed a strong female mentor to remind me that my voice was important in that space. 
it was very difficult to find that outside of the organization. So three years ago, I started Mentor Dinners. And that was just my opportunity to get in front of the most successful women in Charlotte. I didn't think anyone would ever come. This is actually, my first event is the one in pale pink. The bright pink, which this has actually happened as I've gotten more confident, the pink has gotten really bright. So watch out, soon I will blind you all, I'm sure. <laughs> but actually, this was the very first mentor dinner. I blindly asked three women if they would share their unfiltered experiences of their careers. I didn't think anyone would say yes. The first woman to say yes was Congresswoman Alma Adams. She did not know me. There was no reason to invest in me at that moment, but she did. And from there, we would have mentor dinners every single month. And an amazing community of women, many of who are here today, started to develop. It was really cool. From that need, we built a community. But I wanted to quit my full-time job. I was a woman on a mission, but I knew that events and membership wouldn't support that. So I had to think differently. And that's when I came to Creative Mornings. The topic was chaos, and at the time, I was becoming an entrepreneur, and my life was total chaos. The speaker was Chris Elmore. Who knows Chris and who was there? Yeah. I was inspired by what he said that day, but I wanted to have coffee with the man that said it. So I had coffee with him, and he gave me a great piece of advice. He said, as an entrepreneur, you have to recognize what your weaknesses are and then build strategies around how to overcome them. I was like, well, that's great advice for me. But I took that mentorship, and I thought about how can I apply that to this amazing community of women that I'm building. And I started to look at the patterns and the challenges that women were having with mentorship. And I could see clear times in our careers where we needed somebody with more experience. I could see the challenges with mentorship, that it's this awkward ask and nobody really knows how to go about it. It's the strangest thing. You don't ask your friends if they wanna be your friend, but yet we have to go out and ask somebody, hey, would you mentor me? It's this awkward, awkward change. So I really wanted to do something about it. So after I started to recognize the patterns in the community, I started to develop a mentorship model that was like, un and it wasn't like anything that anyone had ever seen. This is, whoop. oh, that's us. <laughs> this is my personal mentorship network. So you'll see the columns of people those represent the times in our life when we need mentorship from somebody else. So there are certain times when we're getting ready to start something, when we're getting ready to lead, when we're getting ready to grow, when we're getting ready to become the expert, when we're getting ready to innovate, or when we just need to survive. Those are the columns in that, uh, on that model. And then there were different levels of mentorship. So if you think about it, some of your inspiration that's the great source of mentorship. So you have your inspiration, then you have the answers that you need in order to get to what's next, and then you have the opportunities. And that's what's key about this model, is we're working our way up to people who will not only take our calls, but they'll also open the doors for us. So that's my mentorship model. Uh, it's been totally created by the women of the Queen City, which is absolutely phenomenal. But now we're going bigger. This model is now going to be used to bridge the gap in education. This is model is now going to be used in human resources to help onboard teams. This model is going to be used for individuals to develop skills to find the mentorship they need so there's never a lack of mentorship again. This model is going to change lives beyond Charlotte. I know that. But I did not come here to tell you about all this, although I get super passionate about it. I love it. And I'd be happy to connect with you, uh, anyone who's looking for mentorship, and share more information. But when Tim prepped me for this session, he said, uh, be sure that you share your heart, because the people in this room are going to be rooting for you. So there's something you should know about my heart. I was born with a congenital birth defect. 
Now that's very different from a genital birth defect. <laughs> very different. Yeah. No. I actually made this mistake one time in conversation and I've never seen a man run so fast from a conversation. It's very true. They found it when I was an adult and I have six holes in my heart and an aortic aneurysm. It was able to be repaired. My cardiologist now looks at it and says, well, it's not pretty, but it works perfectly. And that is the story of my life, seriously. <laughs> not pretty, but it works okay. So uh, this is my hometown. I am from Quincer, Kansas, population 954. Who's been there? Who's been there? So it is a tiny map dot between Denver and Kansas City. Have you been there? Really? He may have. Oh, look it up. <laughs> look it up. I want your autograph. Uh, and it is an investment of time to get out there. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's um, four hours from a major airport. But I was raised by two high school sweethearts who just adore each other. It is almost sickening still as an adult to look at your parents and realize how in love they are. I'm the oldest of four. All of my siblings are educators. So they have seven degrees between them. They're massively smart. I, on the other hand, was a college dropout. Oh, that usually doesn't get cheers. Good, stick around, you're gonna like the last part of this. <laughs> so, the interesting thing about growing up in Quinter is you don't really have any examples of what to be in your life. Most women are teachers, nurses, or moms, some are both, or two things. So I always wondered, what the heck am I gonna be when I grow up? And I majored in public relations. Now remember, I come from this town where I am related to most of the public. I have zero ideas what you do with PR. I was totally lost when I went to college. Totally lost. So lost, in fact, that when I saw a poster in a wholesome Midwestern college that said, New York nannies wanted, I was like, oh, sign me up. <laughs> so when I was 19, I got on a one-way ticket to New York City. And I was in LaGuardia, so I went from this to that. Y'all, I put everything I owned in two suitcases. They were heavier than hell, but I put it in everything in those suitcases. And as they came around on baggage claim, I was like, wow, my suitcases are here, thank goodness. And I was pulling them up, and I was pulling them behind me, and I knocked over a lady. <laughs> she was a native New Yorker, she wasn't happy about it. <laughs> yeah, you must be from New York, yep. She was not happy about it, but the Midwesterner in me came out and I started immediately apologizing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for bumping into you. She picked herself together and she said, if you're gonna survive here, never ever apologize for taking up space. <laughs> and just like that, I was a strong New York native. <laughs> <laughs> but another really incredible thing, life-changing thing happened in New York. I met my husband. He, yes, we got married at Disney World. <laughs> it was really a fairy tale wedding. The little boys around us said, are you a princess? And I'm like, if you knew how much we paid for this wedding, I am. <laughs> but when we talk about invest, are there any entrepreneurs in the room? <laughs> what about your spouses? Are they here? right there at work. That's a good point. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yes. Yeah, that's right. They need benefits. You're right. <laughs> no, my husband is the whole reason that I am able to be here. He has invested three years into this crazy dream I had I, I remember not even being able to articulate my thoughts to him. And just like that, he said to me, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but you've always been the dreamer. 
and I will always support you. And so because of him, this, this has happened. So I thank him, he's actually here. <laughs> the other folks who are here are my parents. Remember, they are from middle of nowhere, Kansas. Y'all, they brought that tornado with them. <laughs> My siblings and I were actually like group texting saying, I, and I was telling them, uh, the tower is closed. <laughs> uh, Mom and dad are circling Charlotte right now, waiting for to land. And all my siblings were like, oh gosh, your city was not ready for our parents. <laughs> but my parents are, if you know anything about me, and everything that Tim said, I hope that that's true. But it all began with them. They're absolutely incredible people. Uh, it has been such a gift to be their daughter. One of the questions that I get a lot is, how do we figure out what we want to do with our life? How do we find purposeful work? And I will tell you, it took me 38 years to find it, and then two more to believe it. And it was such a gift to be their daughter. It was such a gift to marry my husband. But it wasn't until I accepted the challenges that I was trying to overcome. So one thing about me is when, we, when I found out that I had that heart condition, I actually decided that I wasn't going to have children. And it wasn't something that came naturally to me because I was a Midwestern girl that grew up with a lot of great moms in her life. But it was the right decision for me. But the one thing I always wondered is what my legacy would be. And I have now learned the legacy is in the lives you impact, not the lives you create. So invest in the folks in this room. You all, we need to support each other. Creativity is not free. We must invest in one another. We must give each other the mentorship we need. If you need trouble with that, you can come see me. I'll help you out with the mentorship stuff. But then when you can financially do so, invest in the creativity in this room financially. Creativity is not free. What we invest in will get stronger. I am living proof of that. So thank you, my new friends, for investing your time with me. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I love you guys. Thank you. Um, I think we have time for like two or three questions. If anyone has uh, questions for Stacy, we don't always have uh, a little bit of breathing room, but we have time for probably two or three questions if anybody has any. So there's one in the back by the pillar. Can't see that is. Oh, that's a great question. So actually, if you want to know the down and dirty of how this started, uh, I had three test groups that I was testing in. The first one was Charlotte Transplant Network, and I wanted all the new people to have this network where they could start to connect with each other. Well, that became a dating app. Like, everybody was trying to hook up. I've been married for 20 years. I do not need that. <laughs> the other one was uh, women who want more for their daughters, and it was going to be a mother-teenage daughter thing. Turns out, teenage daughters don't want to hang out with mom. <laughs> I would have a crowd full of moms and no teenage daughters to be seen. The one that worked was women who are more than their day jobs. And we did a little testing to see what happened when men came to the events. And it was fascinating. I wasn't skilled in moderating. I, I gotten much better. Um, but women stopped talking. And so in order to protect that safety, uh, we do keep the events mostly women. But I've gotten better at facilitating, so I usually can um, break that a little bit. But the mentorship model is available to all. And I 
highly recommend. Mentorship is important where we're underrepresented. We need an example of how to be successful. So I highly recommend if you have any ambition or want to um, reach that next level, find mentors. Don't find one. That was a mistake people were making. You need a whole group of people that are looking out for you. So yeah, uh, the community is usually mostly women, but the model works for everyone. Any other questions? There's one, I see another one in the back. It's my eyes are gravitating there. <laughs> you hear that? You hear that, yeah, family? More, more laughs than anyone, exactly. <laughs> oh. Thank you. That, that's a perfect plant question. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so there's actually the best way, and I was actually going to share this in the presentation, so thank you again. Uh, if you text CM Invest to 474747, it is all about how to get involved. So you can um, book a time to talk with me, and we can chat about that. Uh, it's about membership. So this is a membership community. Uh, and it's only getting better. I Please close your ears, current members. I finally figured out what I'm doing, so now it works. <laughs> um, and there's also an opportunity there to get the download of my model. So um, yeah, check that out. Let's, let's talk. It's, it's certainly help you. And you know, Tanya Reed, as a enduring sponsor of the Hug Grant program, you model investing in each other. Uh, you may have very well uh, in funded her hug. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Thank you for that. Uh, one final question. Yes, right there by the poll. So I just joined Team Central Network, and it got me. I literally just moved to Charlotte, and all in the past two months, I lost my job, lost my relationship, all this stuff, and Corey Stephen, who is from the league, told me, Woo! Yeah, told me that if I do anything with my credit card, because I'm broke, <laughs> I'm broke, I'm broke, picked up a VC with no money, um, but love Lakers. But she told me if you do anything with your credit card, join the Paid Mentor Network and get connected with Stacy. And it has been life changing over the past month. So shameless plug for Stacy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've been trying to full time keep up there, but changed my life. So what I would like to ask you, but I've asked pretty much all of your panel members previously, <laughs> is for any of the, the young women out there, women who are just starting or finding themselves or whatever, which I think we what is the one piece of advice that you would give me after knowing my story? Thank you for that. I appreciate it. This is what I tell a lot of folks, is if you're uncertain about what your next step is, it's just because you don't have the data yet. Don't give up the pursuit. So I didn't know like I said, what I was supposed to do with my life. But it was a combination of my unique gifts, which I now find are, is humor, which thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> my unique gifts, the challenges that I have overcome in my life and want to help others who are facing them, and then finding the tribe of people to serve. That formula for me was magic because I always knew the gifts. I walked around uh, with a lot of chips on my shoulder before I knew how to overcome the challenges. And then thankfully, I found the right people to serve who believed in me way before I believed in myself. So I, I say, you know, you just don't have all the answers yet, but can, don't give up the looking for them. Like that's super important. Give yourself grace and permission to search because nobody has the answers. Ladies and gentlemen, Stacey Gazio from the Pink Pet Mentor Network.